our final uh, presentation this morning at 9 o'clock. Go ahead. So, this is the Calculus of Cobalt Part 2. I am Sean. And I'm Alex. Uh, just a disclaimer, every tool in track and field is made for their track and field and should be used accordingly or else it would be potentially dangerous for people. Especially football. Yes. Pole vault is one of the most unique events in track and field. Sean is a pole vaulter for our team, so Rapids, and we're both greatly intrigued by the event. It's also a very complicated event and it requires a lot of practice and techniques in order to perform safely and well. Um, it also is used with a lot of physics and thus calculus. And then a little background history on pole vault, since pole vault is just such a cool sport to watch. Um, in its non-competitive form, it was actually used by the ancient Greeks back in 2500 BC. And I thought this was pretty weird, but they actually used it to like vault onto animals, like horses and bulls. So I don't know why the Greeks the Greeks must be pretty insane or something to want to do that. But I thought that was pretty cool. And then uh, in 1775, it was actually started to like use in sports. So it was used in gymnastic competitions for a vertical jump competition. And then it actually became an Olympic event in 1896 in the first modern games. And then a famous quote is "Speak softly and carry a big stick." By Teddy Roosevelt in 19 or yeah, the 19, 20th century, and Rodney Fuchs, uh, just he's our coach, our track coach, and he likes to say it. All right, this is a video of Jaden's jump. Uh, Jaden is a pole vaulter on our team. This video is taken, and he's jumping over a pole, a height of 11 feet and six inches. And what we can use using a capstone video analysis program is his x and y position over the time of the video. We can do this because we are taking the video from a perpendicular view and we can use it to the measurement of his stick, his pole that he jumped with, because we know the distance that it is. Which is about like 13 feet. So it gives us an accurate measurement. All right, right. Using capstone, we can find the average velocity by dividing the uh, distance that he went, which is the area underneath this curve, since the curve is velocities at any given moment during the video and you can divide that by time. And we found that his average velocity was 18.253 miles per hour. Uh, using the law of conservation of energy, we'll be able to find an estimate of his maximum height that he could achieve based on the conversion between kinetic and potential energy. So this is where we get into a little bit of the physics size of, side of it. So the law of conservation of energy in physics is, it states that the total energy of an isolated system should remain constant. So technically his um, kinetic energy and its potential energy should be the same throughout this system and it should form, uh, transform from one form to another and this was discovered by Juliet Robert Mayer and that's him right there in 1842. Now this is not a perfect environment because there is air resistance and friction and also the transfer from elastic energy into the pole but given a perfect environment we should see about the same amount of energy or joules at the start and end of the jump. So we can estimate the height of his jump doing this. So kinetic energy can be found by taking mass multiplied by half and then velocity squared. And then potential energy is mass times the height of the displacement of his center of body mass, which is about like right here on his body because that's the constant in the equation. And then times the acceleration of gravity, which is about negative 9.8. And then we can set these equal to each other. Mass will cancel out and it'll uh, we modified to solve for height, which is height equals velocity squared divided by two times the acceleration of gravity. And then plugging in all the variables that we knew, we took 11.145 uh, feet times the height of his uh, center of body mass, which we measured to be about 3.2 feet. So we estimated that in a perfect environment, Jaden should be able to go 14.36 feet. All right, find the curve of best fit. So what we did here is we pointed the X and Y values into the TI-83 system. And from there, we were able to calculate using the calculator to find curves that would best fit the points. And as you can see, R, as that gets closer to zero, the more inaccurate the function is. As it gets closer to one, the more accurate it is. And you find that this linear is the least accurate at 0.074. Quadratic is the next most accurate at 0 0.67, 0 0.79, wait. <laughs> Cubic at, uh, is the next at 0.949, and cortex is the most accurate. And yeah. And that's the function from the calculator. 
So finding his actual height, the highest plotted point that we were able to plot using the video is at 13.419 feet in the air, and the perfect environment jump would be approximately 14.36. Um, this is the function that the capstone program made and is more accurate because the TI-83 can only go down to the south thousandths place while the capstone went to the exact ones. Yeah. Don't know how far, but pretty exact. So what we did next is we found the total distance that he traveled in the air. So using the arc length function from the start of his jump to the end of his jump, we are able to find that by taking the doesn't show over there, but I can't yeah, see. Integral six point seven four. Yep. So that's the when after the amount of time that he took to actually hit the mat. And so what we did here is simply took the derivative from the initial function and then plugged that into the arc length formula to find that the total distance he traveled was thirty two point five one three feet. All right, and then just uh, to see, we wanted to find his total x distance traveled, and we did this through the velocity function which Capstone gave us as well from his plotted points. And then that's the function there. And we also got curve, or we got Capstone to do curve fitting as well. And this function is actually pretty inaccurate because um, the RMSE, that's different than R squared when it comes to standard deviation. When it's higher, it's actually worse. You want to see a lower RMSE. And if you remember from the other function, the RMSE was actually pretty low, but uh, we didn't point that one out. And we took from the time he left the ground, which was 0.533, the time landed, which was 2.567 seconds, because that's the time he was in the air, so that's actually like the horizontal distance that the pole made him travel. And we took the uh, integral underneath that function to get the total distance that he should have traveled to be 32.234 feet. But since that RMSE was so high, we think that was inaccurate, so we wanted to find other ways to get the area underneath that graph. So we decided to take a trapezoidal sum, divide it into six parts because that was just a nice uh, number of trapezoidal sums to do. So we divided the total time that he was in the air by six and got about 0.339 seconds. So we took uh, different points that were about that far apart and then did the trapezoidal sum with all of those. And our estimated distance that we got from that was 20.056 feet, which was actually closer to the actual distance and you can see Capstone actually takes the area underneath each individual point and gets like an even more exact distance. And the actual distance was 20.144 feet. So all in all, Jaden could across or jump across a seven foot hole. So you can see that pole vault is not very efficient in going horizontal. It's more efficient in going vertical because Jaden's long jump is 18 feet. All right, so finding the x velocity at his highest point, what we did here is we found where he was at the highest point in his jump because then he wouldn't be having a y velocity because he'd be remaining constant there. So what we did here is we found that time, which is at 1.7 to no, 1.733 to 1.767. And what we did there is found those same times for the x values and took the difference between the distance that he traveled and the time, and then we divided them both to find that his velocity uh, his x velocity while he was in the highest point was 5.921 miles per hour. Yeah, so it's not moving very fast. And then we wanted to find the y velocity before hitting the ground. We were actually, actually able to estimate this again using his gravitational potential energy at the height of his jump and transferring it to kinetic energy. So we used the mass times gravitational constant times the height again and got that his potential energy at the height of his jump was about negative 2,665 joules. And then we set that equal to the kinetic energy function to solve for velocity. So our estimated velocity that he should be going before he hits the ground is negative 19.796 miles per hour. And then just to see how fast he actually was going, we took the times right before he hit the ground and took the difference between that. And his actual velocity was pretty close to that. And air resistance just makes up for that lost speed that he gets. And it was negative 17.764 miles per hour. So yeah, our conclusion is that calculus can be found and used in just about anything and can help in our observation of different phenomenons such as pole vault.